Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to call this meeting to order. The proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. We'll move on to item 1.2 of our agenda, which is roll call, and I will please ask our clerk, Jesse Clark, to please call the roll. Thank you. Mayor Lamstead, are you present? I am present. Deputy Mayor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Braybrook? Present. Councillor Cadigan? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. And for staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer? Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works? Present. Bianca Dragisevic, Deputy Clerk? Present. Um, and Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services Clerk, is present. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse. We can move on to item 1.3 of our agenda, which is land acknowledgement and moment of reflection. We respectfully acknowledge that Trent Lakes and Peterborough County are located on the Treaty 20 Michisaugee Territory and in the traditional territory of the Michisaugee and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty First Nation, which include Alderville, Beausoleil, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nation. Trent Lakes respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment to reflect on these principles and our duties and responsibilities as members of Council. Okay, now we can move on to item two of our agenda, which is disclosure of pecuniary interest. If anyone on council has a pecuniary interest on an item on the agenda, please disclose it now or any time during the meeting prior to discussing the item you have an interest in. And seeing no hands, we can move on to the approval of the agenda as circulated. Is anyone prepared to make that motion? I see Councillor Cadigan for a mover and Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. And we can move on to item four of our agenda, which is presentations. And 4.1 is Margaret Roberts, our acting CIO for the Trent Lakes Public Library. And please feel free to come up to the podium and do your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. So, Your Worship, councillors, and esteemed staff. Um, thank you for this opportunity to present um, information about your library's budget request um, and uh, hope that you'll be able to consider it as you consider all the various demands and requests for the budget. Um, there is a presentation and I'll, who's, are you controlling it? Upstairs. Upstairs, okay. I'll let them know <laughs> when to when to flip it. I just want to, to know the backdrop that this budget allows the Trent Lakes Library to operate two branches, one in Cavendish, one in Buckhorn, as well as the Goodbye Room in Buckhorn. And uh, the Buckhorn branch is open for 38 and a half hours a week, and the Cavendish branch is open for 12 hours a week at this point. Uh, electronic resources, of course, are accessible 24 hours a day, and um, you will see an increased use of those in, in the uh, stats that we're going to show you. Um, the two branches are staffed by one full-time employee, uh, Stephanie McPherson, who's the CEO, and four part-time employees. Now, Stephanie is on leave right now, so I'm filling in on an interim basis. We expect that she'll slowly uh, be coming back into work within a couple of weeks. All right, so we'll go to the next slide, please. I hope. There's our vision statement, so that's the, the backdrop of everything we do and how we feel that uh, and we know that we are recognized as contributing to the quality of life in Trent Lakes. Thank you. Next slide. And this is the mission. This is this is the raison d'etre for the budget request that we're making. It's the access to a range of information resources, programs, equipment, and services. And uh, that's a lot to ask. And we, I think we've done a good job over the years, or Stephanie has over the years, making this work. Thank you. Next slide. And here are some strategic directions. These are things that we're really um, focusing on. Now I'm speaking partly from my experience as past um, board chair. I stepped away from that role to do what I'm doing now. Um, to make sure that the, the usage is meeting the needs of the community. So as you do, keeping an eye on what's changing, what's different, what's falling by the wayside, what the requests are. And we're getting a lot of requests for how to use my Kobo and how to use my e-reader and how to do this. And ah, workshops are needed. Uh, communication about what we're doing and how to access it. And then always reviewing the collections, culling things that haven't been taken out in years or maybe outdated. You'll notice there's uh, less nonfiction on the shelves because people are using electronic sources rather than books. Um, 
what kind of programs are needed and how is our space being used. And we've actually just started to some rejigging. Uh, there was a counselor in yesterday, you may, may have noticed that things are in different places. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is this is um, from a presentation that that one of the provincial association members made to us, and it's based on facts from 2022 because they they gather all the facts, and the 2023 information isn't uh, hasn't been collated and sent back out yet. But um, it takes a look at the spending that we do, and it has us in a group of 45. We are uh, in a uh, population group of 45 libraries based on our population between 5,000 and 10,000. Some some of local uh, libraries are in that, so it's kind of interesting to look what your neighbors are doing. You'll see a couple of comparators as we go through. Um, so the spending on physical items, books, in other words, uh, is uh, 18,000 versus the, the group's average is 23,000, so we're a little under there or quite under there. But per capita, we're holding our own. We're spending more per capita. Uh, given, but given again the fact that we are the eighth smallest of the 45 libraries, and that trend goes through. We have fewer titles, um, but we have more print items per capita, slightly more. And circulation is considerably lower. However, uh, we're doing well with our, um, for our size, we're doing well for the uh, electronic downloads. Okay, next slide, please. And there you are if you want if you want to be uh, a little nosy about what some of our local neighbor libraries <laughs> systems are doing. <laughs> and again, some of them have two and some don't. All right, so this is you will have seen this kind of thing um, through Stephanie in past years, I'm sure. But look at, over on the right side, the 45% increase in electronic book circulation is really noticeable, um, and the increase in programs. Now we had some. Uh, slower years, of, co of course, because of COVID, but the programs are picking back up and we're now planning some more as well. Next slide. All of that goes against a backdrop of money, of course, which is why I'm here. Um, so here are the expenses and as per any uh, government-based organization or because uh, I've worked for municipal, uh, provincial organizations and municipal ones before, staffing is an enormous percentage of, of the budget. And um, what you will see on this is the slide that the proposed budget has an increase of 16% of uh, staffing costs increase um, and then 8% for uh, over total and 8% for all other expenses. Uh, and the staffing is lower for 2023 because we have um, one staff member resigned so and she has not been replaced and I, well, except that I'm doing um, the CEO's job just two days a week, basically. So there's been a reduction in staffing since September. And that's given us a bit of a, a saving against what was projected for this for this last year, 2023. All right, over to the next slide and the request. So I just want to say against our detailed request, we're not dramatically, um, we're not expecting any dramatic increases in expenses other than equipment maintenance, um, which I think has gone from about 3,000 to 8,000 projected because our library equipment is aging, but they're taking pretty good care of it in my opinion. And um, so I think we'll be okay with that. The CEO reviewed the, the budget with the library board before she left. Um, and I've looked at the budget with my business background and I've talked to staff about it um, and to the staff of the library uh, and municipal staff. And it's really hard to find areas to reduce discretionary spending unless we reduce the book budget, which kind of flies in the, uh, the face of logic for a library to, to not buy uh, resources because they're busy paying for the heat um, and, and the staffing costs. So uh, it, it, it's a struggle. And of course, overall, the expenses are going up. Propane hasn't been getting cheaper. Hydro hasn't been getting cheaper. Uh, and it, it will impact our ability to maintain levels of service. You, you may not know this, but the staff is doing the cleaning at the, in the building. So they are uh, cleaning the toilets, replacing the paper products, vacuuming, washing the floors. That's a little unusual for a library staff, but it needs to be done and they do it and there's no no complaints about it. So that saves us about $4,000 every year. Um, they've also started washing the toys in case you ever bring any little ones into play in the kitchen corner. Uh, you can be assured that those are clean, <laughs> clean products in there. Uh, and we're exploring ideas for additional 
fundraising, we are so lucky to have the goodbye room because last year, 2023, they probably brought in, brought in close to what our budget for purchasing books was. So they effectively doubled our ability to put books on the shelves. And given the number of large print and uh, new book um, requests, they're well, the money is well spent. Um, the, the, uh, it's a wonderful source of revenue, but it impact varies on the quality and number of donations, of course. They have 14 volunteers right now, so that's a strong workforce. Um, and, but if that was to change, it would have an impact on the operation of the place. And of course, God forbid anything like COVID goes through again, because that was a, those were a pretty uh, short funded years. So what you're going to see is that we're basically asking for um, $34,311 more, 13% increase. Seems bold, but there's no reserves available to us anymore. Um, and that was uh, you know, $25,000-ish last year. Um, and so we're asking for you to approve a 13% increase. And uh, we're doing that humbly, but with, uh, with urgency as well. And this uh, concludes my comments, Your Worship. So it's over to you. And any questions? Thank you very much for your. Thank you very much for helping out of the library personally. That was very nice that you're able to step up and assist there when you stepped into the office. Well, greatly appreciate that. You have a wonderful know. staff here and there that are helping me mumble, grumble through. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly appreciate it. Okay. Does anyone on council have any questions of Margaret? Councillor Cadigan, go ahead. For you, Mayor Lamb said. Uh, when you speak about the increase in the cost of books or the funding for books, is that electronic as well as hard copy? Through you, uh, Mayor Lamb said, yes, it is. The The books are going up. I just actually placed an order for $7,000 worth of books, and uh, it was a little bit of a heart attack that it would cost that much. But yes, the, the books are going up. The e-resources are costing a little more as well, and it, it's, as, it's as if you buy a permit for your patrons to be able to access those. So they're not just hanging out there in space. You have to pay to be able to access them on behalf of your patrons. If I may add a comment yeah, there. Councilor Cadigan. Uh, my wife feels like she's responsible for the increase in electronic books. She's constantly <laughs> listening to the uh, I spoke with the parliamentary assistant, Laura Smith, on Tuesday mm -hmm. and requested more electronic resources and more funding for mm -hmm. that, uh, whether we get it. Hopefully, um, our MPP will assist with that. Uh, and keep up the good work. Thank you. To you, thank you very much for the advocacy and, and the appreciation. Yes, thank you very much, Councilor Cadigan, for doing that presentation at Wilmer. Any other conversation or questions? Go ahead, Councilor Weber. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Uh, thanks very much for your presentation. Uh, just a uh, Couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so the 2023 uh, on your chart here. So 2023, there's an increase of 34,000, 13 percent, as you mentioned. Uh, what was the uh, difference between the 2020, I believe, it was 2021 and 2022? Would you have that? Mm -hmm. So in 2020, uh, through you, Mr. Or Your Honor, through you, um, the uh, the budget in 2021 was 26,000, no, 26,000, 269,431. And for 2022, the uh, budget was, where am I, what was the budget? Two, 291,440. So, so it looks like the it's come down in, in operating. If I'm reading it correctly, 2023. Oh, wait, am I reading, I'm reading it wrong? The operation or the expenses? Well, don't forget, we were, through you, um, sorry, we were closed for portions of that because of COVID, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, do you, uh, through you, Mayor, uh, a couple more. Uh, do you anticipate a, an increase in 2025, seeing the way things are, are going, or and, and are there opportunities for uh, potential savings? Through you, Mr. Mayor, or Your Worship, the um, I mean, any savings would be from reducing staff or closing the library hours. My my preference as a, an 
unlibrarian CEO would be actually to change the hours to be open in the evenings, one or two evenings a week. I think we'd, we'd see more families that way and grow more readers and contribute to the community a little better in terms of making some, some linkages between services. Um, savings would be from operational things such as turning the temperature out, turning the temperature down during the day while we're in there. I don't think that's unheard of. Um, it might be uncomfortable, but it's not unheard of. Uh, and I'm not sure, because I'm not in, in the library knows as well, I'm not sure what um, consortia there are in terms of accessing services. So I don't know, for instance, I, I would assume that the propane is purchased in, in in conjunction with the, the municipality, but I'm not sure. I'm coming from a school board background where we had consortia across the province for things like that. So I don't know what the scene is like for libraries that way. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'm seeing none. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Great morning again. Are you prepared to make a motion to receive that for information? Yes. And, and yes. I think we need a combination of things there. We need to approve the. Okay, go ahead. So I'll make a motion to receive the presentation, also approve the budget request, and just note that uh, when we had looked at the budget previously, it was included in the amount that has been requested. Thank you very much for that motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Is there any conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much, Margaret. Okay, we can move on to item five of our agenda, which is delegation. Item 5.1 is delegation for grant applications. And we have a few people that would like to speak. I think we have start with number one was Sarah Jo Piper from the Dharma Center. Sarah, are you online? I am. Hello. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Jesse, I'm happy if you uh, navigated the slides, if you would. Yep, no problem. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, would you like my camera on? No. Whatever you prefer, I guess. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get it on, actually. I'm having some technical things, so maybe I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a new program for me. So um, first of all, I just want to say I'm a big library fan, and I'm so grateful you have approved that request. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Um, so I'm Sarah Jo Pfeiffer. I am a, uh, I, I'm doing some grant writing for the Dharma Center of Canada. And I just want to ask, has, has any of you been to the Dharma Center? No. OK, so just to no, say I'm you many, all. Many, many, oh. it's a couple of decades ago. <laughs> OK, OK, yeah, we've been in existence for over 50 years, as you may know, and um, all of you would be welcome to pop by. It's on Galway Road. Um, so um, yes, uh, as I say, we've been in existence for over 50 years, so we have a really solid presence in the area. Um, we are a, a non-sectarian charitable organization, and we welcome people from all over the world, actually, but they come to this sort of rooted retreat center in the municipality of Trent Lakes. Um, and we offer um, programs, retreats, volunteer opportunities, um, and in all realms. Um, it is, uh, you know, we focus on meditation as a way to help people um, find a, a good way of being in the world, which as my um, uh, proposal indicated, we really need in these days. It's a it's a wild world out there, isn't there? <laughs> and we need places of refuge where we can come and learn, ground ourselves, and be of benefit for ourselves and others. So we contribute to the well-being of anyone who comes, really. Um, we have retreats focused on youth uh, as well. Um, and actually, Jesse, you can go to the next slide, if you would, please. Um, yeah, so uh, it's it's a unique place. We uh, I noticed in your funding criteria that um, you know collaboration, positive community impact, partnerships, environment. So we we are a strong place that um, is engaged in all of these. Um, 
sort of a unique blend of mindfulness meditation, but also people come and work on the property, help to hold the environmental standards that we have. Um, we actually welcomed Tibetan refugees way back in, 19, in the 1970s. Um, and strong education, so our core teachers, many of them who live in the municipality of Trent Lakes, they come from a wide variety of, variety of backgrounds, science, the arts, ecology. Um, we are in a rural area, so on 400 acres of mostly undeveloped land. And as you may know this sometimes, um, it, it means that uh, animals <laughs> also want to use our buildings. And so the point of this request is we are seeking some help, some funding help from the municipality to help us um, both um, expand and restore one of our key buildings. And I'll get more to that in a moment. Um, but just to say that our commitment to protect the environment is very strong um, and it's part of our, our, our official mandate. Thanks, Jesse. You can go to the next slide. Oh, this is small print. I'm sorry. But these are you can always go to our website and see our selection of our retreats. So uh, one of them in that uh, you mentioned health and well-being in your funding criteria. Um, so one of our retreats uh, that we offered recently is meditation as antidote to anxiety, such a key uh, subject in our world today. Um, again, I, I mentioned that we have retreats focused on young people, actually many who come from the municipality. Um, and that's a strong following, um, Terry and Mala, who live in Kinmount. Um, and uh, education, bringing together astronomy, physics, as well as meditation. And then the environment, David Berry, who's one of our core teachers, comes from the US and is a, is a, works with the US government around um, ecological um, programs, and he's a strong force there. So there's a, that's just a selection. Um, feel free to go to our website, dharmacenter.org. Next play, page, please, Jesse. <clears throat> yeah, and we had a, a world-renowned architect recently visit who, at the end of the visit, he was just amazed. And he said, what you have here is a national treasure. It's sort of tucked away on Galway Road in the municipality of Trent Lakes, but it's an amazing place that brings together a lot that is needed in this world. Um, you mentioned in your funding criteria, volunteerism. and uh, while we do have two paid staff, many, many volunteers come to the municipality of Trent Lakes, to the Dharma Center, to uh, live in the area and, um, and, and help at the Dharma Center. So we, as many organizations do, we, uh, we depend on our volunteers. We have about a 1,500 support base of people. Newsletter goes out monthly. Um, and as I say, uh, we have a long track record over 50 years with a strong board. Um, yeah, so go ahead to the next slide, Jesse. Just to say we, we've also engaged with, you know, we're listed in the Court of Lakes Tourism um, and it's it's sort of a draw to the, to the area. Um, so one of our... Um, one of our mandates is to welcome all beings. <laughs> and of course, that includes people with mobility issues. This is a picture of the Terra cabin, which is one of our main cabins where people gather. We're hoping to engage in a uh, project with a fairly high price tag. Um, we've already done a lot of fundraising and we've received a kind bequest. So we've raised $80,000, but we're looking to the municipality of Trent Lakes to help with this project, um, it's to it's to enable it to both become um, what is the word uh, not safe or sealed, but protected, I guess, from all the other little beings who want to use the space. Uh, it's in the middle of the woods, and we need to make it both wheelchair accessible so that we can welcome uh, more people and to expand it. So again, that it can be more of a gathering space to people coming to learn and help be of benefit to the world. Uh, yeah. So next slide, please, Jesse. Yeah, so this, so what we're asking for, we're asking for $10,000. And I know you have a lot of um, priorities uh, on your, um, or funding asks on your list. So I acknowledge that um, with humility, as the library person said. Um, but this, the $10,000 would help us become 
uh, make the entrance wheelchair accessible so that people can actually get into the building. Um, and we're planning on making the whole building wheelchair accessible. So that is that is the cost for our request. Um, again, lots of animal proofing, insulation. That's that's bigger than what we're asking you for, but just to say it's a big project and it's sort of a a first project for us around becoming wheelchair accessible. So it'll be our model building at the Dharma Center. Thanks, Jesse. Next slide, which I think is the last one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to say that we work in the local community, we're working with local contractors, local cooks, um, and we see ourselves as intricately linked with the municipality of Trent Lakes. Um, we serve, uh, you know, with COVID, we offer retreats online as well, but in person, we're serving over a thousand people at the Dharma Center and um, looking to welcome more with hopefully the generous uh, funding on, on your part. So thank you very much for your time and attention and consideration. Okay, thank you, Sarah Joe. Has anyone on council have any questions of Sarah? Oh. I'm seeing none. Okay, Councilor Braber, go ahead. Thank you, through you, uh, Mayor. Thanks very much, uh, Sarah, for your presentation. Uh, just a quick question. Um, what were your uh, total uh, revenue and expenses for 2022, if you have that? You know what? I am not the financial person. I'm sorry, but I will see if I can dig it up. If you can give me a moment. Um, I did send along the um, our financials for 2021. So it's part of our grant application. Um, moment. I'm sorry. Uh, and sorry, can you repeat the question? I have the financial statement up. No. Yeah, I was just, uh, and I do see the uh, the revenue and expenses for uh, 2020 and 2021. I was just asking uh, if you had them for 2022, because I saw there was an increase uh, from 2020 to 2021 of uh, I think yes. just over 25,000. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm so sorry, I don't have that figure handy. I can get it within within the day, by the end of the day, if I could send it to Jesse. It was, it was more more just a, of an interest question, uh, Sarah. Uh, I don't think sure. uh, I don't think my decision uh, is going to hinge too much on that. It was more of a, an interest uh, just to see yeah. any patterns and that sort of thing. And Absolutely, one, I'm one happy to send that to Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. One last question, uh, if I may, Mayor. Go ahead. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, how many uh, visitors to the Dharma would you estimate are from our uh, municipality? Or did you, because you mentioned uh, international. So uh, how yep. many from the municipality would you estimate? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think I think the point of the international too is that they're drawn to this area. So they get to interact with the area. So that's actually an important point. But from this area, and thanks for the question, I would say about 30%. Okay. okay. Thank you. And again, our core teachers have a strong representation in this area as well. Um, so they, again, they, they know this area, they're rooted in this area, and they bring people um, from all over to this area. Okay, thank you very much. There you go. Thank Any you other questions? I'm seeing none. I would like to thank you very much for your presentation, mm -hmm. our delegation, and, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Okay, okay, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you very much. We can move on now to Ed Leardham from the Kortha Lakes Steward Association. If you'd like to come to the podium and do your delegation, please. <clears throat> Just so you know, we're going to receive them all at the end of the. So that's, Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I seen Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor, Deputy, Councillors, Staff. Um, wasn't too sure we'd make it in this morning with that lovely ice storm kind of we had last night and yesterday, but here we are and glad to see you all again. Um, I know you know me and I know you know the organization that I'm representing today, the Corth Lake Sturge Association and what we do on an ongoing basis, which is monitoring, reporting and educating. It's our mission statement, basically. Uh, we do water quality monitoring, including E. coli testing, phosphorus level testing, water clarity, dissolved oxygen, and water temperatures. 
Another one of our programs is the Natural Edge Shoreline Restoration Program, uh, which we've had uh, now been doing for three years, two years, I think three years. Um, and uh, for 2020, well, there's a from there's two. What am I trying to say? We received uh, a grant from the Environmental uh, and Climate Change Canada organization uh, to span from the middle of last year through to the middle of 2025. So I was going to say two years, but it's mid-year, mid-year. Um, that grant is $58,000 roughly, uh, and that is to assist us to continue the program uh, to restore uh, shorelines in the area uh, to a natural state, um, at least 50 to 70 percent of the shorelines uh, on each one. Sampling and monitoring of aquatic species, uh, invasive species, is is an ongoing uh, effort as well. We have public meetings in the spring and in the fall each year, and we just decided on our uh, spring meeting coming up in May 25th. Mark it on your calendars. We'll send out notices uh, May 25th at the BCC, Buckhorn, and the doors will open at 9:30 a.m. We attend and often present at many lake, cottage, and ratepayers meetings and AGMs. We often collaborate with other local and nearby like-minded associations, educational institutions, and organizations, like, for example, the Scugog Lake Stewards, the North Quart Lakes Association, Ontario Technical University, Trent University, Fleming College, Queen's University, and the labs within these. Watersheds Canada, FOCA, um, and Quartha Conservation, just to name a few. We respond to inquiries from individuals, lake associations, municipalities, labs, and the general public on many topics related to our lakes and waterways and what's in them. In the fall of 2023, we published our new Aquatic Plants Guide, a 77-page booklet. I believe I gave you each one, at least one, um, full of descriptions, drawings, <clears throat> and glossy pictures of 30 aquatic plants categorized and with no prejudice, whether native or invasive. We do indicate which are invasive and on the invasive species watch list and at the risk of occupying the Quartha Lakes and spreading. This guide costs us over $10,100 to publish and print. It's also on our website <clears throat> and it is offered to the general public at no charge. In addition to our usual project and activities as noted, our plans for 20 2024 are the following. We have started revamping our website it currently sits on a free domain and gets cluttered with ads. It has become cumbersome to manage and update and it contains a lot of old information that is generally outdated. We are planning to spend some money on a proper domain and hosting platform and if needed to hire a webmaster to help us create a new website. We are looking at a proposal from Quartha Conservation on a joint project for a near shore water quality monitoring project. The estimated cost of that was between five and $10,000. People are stating, starting to understand that the shoreline, shoreland, and nearshore areas are highly, highly important to the health of our lakes and waterways and the life under the surface. We are looking at a proposal to collaborate with the Land Between organization on their Blue Lakes program. There may be more as the year progresses. With our respect for a grant, our, our request for a grant from the municipality, and the reason I decided to speak to you today. We recognize that your granting process and criteria um, for grants has changed for 2024. It's a welcome change uh, to how grants were granted in the past years. Since grants are given to help nonprofits with their liability insurance costs, we thought we might request a grant to assist with our liability insurance, which has been closing in on about $2,000 the past few years. That sounds fairly high, but we have in-water activities, which is covered as an added coverage and we have insurance for all our volunteers. Our grant request is instead to help us with our costs to produce and print our annual lake water quality report, which we distribute to lake, college, lake and cottage associations, individuals, marinas, and the rental houseboat operators, the four municipalities in our area of operations, labs, and the general public, again, free of charge. The cost to produce and publish our annual report increases each year, as everything does, and is close to $5,000. We print 2,000 copies, and it's also on our website. A <clears throat> request for a grant from the municipality is not for the full amount. Rather, our request is the same as in previous years, $1,000. We are trusting revenue from our 
uh, regular donors and others, new ones, add sales and grants from other municipalities to cover the remaining costs. However, if you see fit to grant us a higher amount, we wouldn't refuse it. Um, I will close with this comment. I'm honored to once again be leading this organization as chair, as well as treasurer, and I'm truly amazed what this small group of volunteers accomplishes every year. Thank you, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Thank you very much, I do. Okay, anyone on council have any questions of Ed? Go ahead, Councilor Franza. Yeah, uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, Ed, how many of the uh, shoreline restoration projects would be within our municipality? So we, as noted, we have four, we are operating four municipalities. Yeah. Um, we generally have, I would say, 30% in Trent Lakes, okay. um, a few more uh, spread across Selwyn and um, and um, Duro Dummer, very few in the city of Corth Lakes. Okay. Uh, uh, through the mayor, what 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 lakes would uh, would you have uh, done projects in the last year? We've done in the last year we've done at least two on around Pigeon Lake. Um, I attended one um, on the opposite shore to uh, Big Boyd Island. Um, and another one, I don't remember. I don't know where that location is, but on Pigeon Lake. Okay, okay thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councilor Baber. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Thanks very much, Ed, for your presentation. And I know how much meetings cost. I've uh, attended a couple of your meetings, so they're very informative and uh, I enjoy them. Um, with regard to the new e, uh, environmental advisory committee that's going to be uh, forming, how do you see uh, your work sort of interacting with, with that new uh, advisory committee? I'm in the fortunate position to have um, um, connections to a number of uh, environmentally conscious people, biologists, um, so, so um, through this organization, KLSA. Um, I see the new EAC uh, drawing on uh, those uh, experience and, and knowledge and skills through me uh, as part of that organization, uh, the committee as well. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? I'm seeing none. I would like to thank you very much, Ed, for your presentation or your delegation. And I do certainly appreciate that aquatics species guide. That my copy was snatched off me immediately from someone that lives on Mississauga River. Their children are identifying as many of those plants as they can on the river. That's so the perfect it's amazing. thing. Amazing. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I'll never see it again, so I need some more. If I have some with me, I'll bring you some. Please do. Thank you Thank very you. much. Okay. Thank you very much. Finally, Ed. Okay, we can move on to Bruce Avril of the Trent Lakes Recreation. Bruce, are you online? I am. Good morning, Council. Good morning. So the Trent Lakes Recreation Association, our focus is on recreation, sports, and youth arts. And here are some of the activities we've been a part of in 2023. After school hockey skills at the Buckhorn Sports Pad, pickleball at the Cavendish Community Center, Buckhorn Old Timers Hockey with many Trent Lakers playing in North Kawartha and Selwyn, and of course, youth performing arts. And if you'll recall, I was here to see you twice in 2023. The first time was in January to request a community grant for our youth performing arts group. And the second was for my presentation in August regarding the outdoor performance space at Lakers Golf. Next slide, please. So thanks to council, our last year's community grant helped fund our new uh, portable stage and our matching sponsor for the stage was Dr. Dan Salbodian and Stonescape Quarry. Uh, the stage was purchased within weeks of having received the funding and was used for uh, a, a fundraiser for our theater lighting. Uh, you can see the country for a cause poster on the right of this slide. Uh, it was also used for the festival of small halls event and it held up there, thank goodness. Um, some posters and pictures of that event on the left of that slide. And of course, for some of our youth performing arts classes. Next slide, please. 
So what have we been doing with the Youth Performing Arts at Lakers Tall? We acquired the stage and the lighting. Now we have a need for sound equipment, which will sort of round off everything that we require on the equipment side. We held uh, spring and fall classes this year, and we'll be holding spring classes starting in February of 2024. And we've introduced a school engagement program, and more about that in a second. We've introduced online registration software. And in the future, we hope to have a summer camp. Um, I say summer camp in 2025 because um, we're hoping that an outdoor performance space uh, may be built at Lakers Hall in 2024, which would increase hall utilization. And in essence, it would create a center for performing arts in Trent Lakes. And it would boost economic development as well because it would attract families to visit and live in Trent Lakes. And council, please, uh, here's, here's something I think is important. Put out a call to our arts community and make them a part of the programming for our new outdoor performance space. Next slide, please. So this is about our school engagement program. So I'm trying to build the number of children that we have that are uh, that are aware of the programs that we're offering uh, at Lakers Tall. So what we've done is I've gone back to uh, Dr. Nance Lavodian and Stonescape. They've sponsored some field trips to go from the Buckhorn Public School uh, over to Lakers Tall for improv workshops. And uh, so this will be grade four, five and grade five, six. And it'll be working with school, the school and the students. And this helps the students to build confidence and teamwork, achieve health and well being, and it contributes to lifelong success. And next slide, please. And this is about our new online registration software. So parents can go online, they can read about the course, they can read about the instructor, uh, they can register their child. They get discounts for if there's two children, let's say, or three children in the family, or they register early, and then they can pay for the program uh, through the online uh, checkout and payment system. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So this is our community grant request. Uh, this is for sound equipment. It's $2,500. Uh, we've uh, received quotes from several places. And we need some speakers and stands, um, some mics, some mixer, and uh, some cabling. Uh, as, you, as mentioned, we have stage and lighting, which you can see pictures of on the right side of this slide. And now we are asking you to help us fund some sound equipment. Next, next slide, please. And these are these sites. Uh, these URLs mark the various stages of development for our program. Community grant presentation, outdoor performance space presentation, online registration software, and Lakers Hall development. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, I'd like to repeat what I always say about Lakers Hall. It is the Massey Hall of Trent Lakes. Please help us acquire the sound equipment our youth performing arts group needs, and let's make Lake Cruz Hall our community performing arts center. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce Admiral. Okay, does anyone on the council have any questions of Bruce? Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lamson. Thanks, Bruce. Um, first, I want to thank you for championing these initiatives and, and for bringing the arts to Trent Lakes. Um, it, it's great to have you passionately, you know, serving in that area. I have one question. Um, one of the things that persuaded me and others last year to support uh, funding for your stage was that it was portable and that it could be used in other community centers or throughout Trent Lakes. And I realized that there needs to be a pull as well as a push, but I just wondered if in fact there'd been any interest expressed uh, in other by other community centers and whether in fact the stage has been set up in, in some of those. Um, I haven't had any uh, requests to, to have it used elsewhere. Um, it is it is portable. Um, let me just say that setting it up um, at Lake Hurst Hall requires some effort because there are other events taking place there. 
So when it needs to be used, I use, I'm the one typically that goes over and sets it up, breaks it down. So uh, it, it is portable in that sense. We do have a trolley for it. Not problematic, but more difficult, putting it onto the back of a truck, taking it on, uh, let's say, to, to another community center. But, but certainly willing to work with other community centers if, if they have a reason to use it. So I, I don't know, I, I guess um, maybe Councillor Cadigan's more familiar with uh, the Cavendish Community Centre. Is there, are there instances that you've seen this year where it could have been used? Primarily, it's for you, Mayor Lamb said. Go ahead. Primarily, there are potlucks and I'm not really familiar with any performances where a stage would be required other than for Santa Claus. Okay. Is that answer? Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, appreciate all that, Bruce. I think it might be um, helpful, um, and we would appreciate it if you or through us, uh, we make the other community centers aware that it's available. I suspect part of it is just an awareness problem that they, they don't know that it exists. Um, uh, so I think that's you know certainly the, the municipality can play a role in that. And perhaps you can help us with that so that we uh, at least have the opportunity to use it elsewhere in the uh, in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Cadigan. A comment, if I may, Mayor. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to publicly thank you, Bruce, for your assistance with uh, line painting at Cavendish and the acquisition of the third net. I appreciate that, and the residents appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Bruce Avro. Greatly appreciate all your efforts. Okay, we can move on now to, well, go ahead, Councillor Braver. <laughs> thank, uh, uh, thank you, Mayor, um, and through you. Uh, thanks very much, Bruce, uh, again, for uh, your presentation. Uh, I know you and I have been working fairly closely uh, to, to bring uh, these, um, these things to fruition and I just wanted to mention that your input and passion uh, that brought the youth performing arts to Trent Lakes has elevated our arts profile in the Peterborough County uh, and, and of which we're uh, grateful and, and don't stop and if I may one more comment through you there uh, on to add to Deputy Mayor Armstrong's comments Bruce um, do you think there's an opportunity that you could reach out to perhaps uh, Cavendish and Galway uh, in conjunction with um, work that the municipality can do to, to get the word out, so to speak, and uh, if there is a counterpart or is, uh, as your moniker says, Trent Lakes Recreation Association, uh, do you think you could um, try to find somebody uh, that's your equivalent at Lakehurst Hall in Cavendish and Galway and then just set up a sort of uh, line of communication uh, as far as the arts and any uh, sort of equipment that uh, is available and, and perhaps um, with the assistance of uh, Councillor uh, Cadigan um, try to set up some arts programs uh, in both uh, Cavendish and Galway as well. And it, uh, so that we can get have it uh, a little bit more rounded. And I, and I know you're busy with the after school hockey, and, and I know you've uh, yeah. assisted with the uh, the pickleball in Cavendish. So I just that's more of a, a question um, that I have to you, Bruce. Yep, and and I and I definitely will do that. We'll uh, we'll establish um, somebody at both halls uh, to connect with and and stay in touch with to see how we can work together. Okay. And just, just one more comment uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, just as early as yesterday, uh, the Lakers Hall had um, um, had the Festival of Small Halls reach back out to them, and, and they want to uh, utilize the hall again in the fall. So that just plays in everything. And it's, it's just a testament to not only Bruce, but Lakers Hall and, uh, and the interest in Trent Lakes uh, for the arts, uh, so much so that... Uh, the festival of small halls wants to come back in their own fruition as opposed to us reaching out to them. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Bremer. Thank you very much, Bruce. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. 
Hang on. Thank you very much, Bruce. Okay, we can head on to our next delegation, which is Hayden Wilson of the Fourth Atlantis. Go ahead, unmute yourself, Hayden. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone can hear me all right this morning. I had some weird mic issues going on where I sounded a little more robotic than usual. So hopefully I can be a little livelier on this one. Okay. Um, also, uh, apologies, my camera is not working on my laptop, uh, so I will be a floating voice in the room instead. Sorry about that. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for the chance to talk about our, our projects this year. Um, always a treat to be able to come to these and see um, all the really cool projects that are happening in the community. It's uh, a fairly widespread community, so it's really interesting to be able to see all these really wonderful projects and initiatives and people taking on these passions um, in Trent Lakes. Um, and I'm here to talk a little bit about how we'd like to um, <clears throat> sort of further some of our work in getting people outdoors and access to nature and a variety of different things. So uh, next slide, please. Ah, so uh, I just wanted to talk briefly about who we are as an organization. I know I've talked um, at these presentations before in the past, but uh, my name is Hayden Wilson. I'm the Land Stewardship Manager at Kawartha Land Trust. And Kawartha Land Trust, we are a conservation charity to, with a mission to care for the lands entrusted to us and help others protect the land they love in the Kawarthas. We currently protect uh, 33 properties that includes more than 5,350 acres of ecologically sensitive land that includes access to recreation and that we engage in many different ways in the communities through volunteering, trail access, um, and as well in a new uh, program that we've started working on private lands as well to begin to really champion the wonderful work people are already doing on their properties to you know, further the missions of environmental protection, connection to nature, just getting outside and, and having a good time. Um, and I wanted to add that last point on this slide of continuously being inspired by the landscape, particularly in Trent Lakes. I am a big paddler, I am a big outdoor recreation fan, and the uh, uh, sort of amenities that exist in this area for access to nature are, are really wonderful, they're really special. Um, and I am, you know, if I'm ever feeling a little bit disconnected, it's really easy to just sort of walk out and get reconnected with the landscape in this in this municipality. Uh, next slide. <laughs> So our uh, 2024 application here um, really focuses in two key areas or sort of two key themes. Um, mm -hmm. One is focused on community access to natural areas, um, including infrastructure, accessibility features, and the other is sort of open door amenities, um, as I'm sort of calling it here, and upgrades to sort of our existing facilities and trails. Uh, these two things are really important to us as an organization and through looking through the application um, as well to the municipality. Um, Access to natural areas is proven to have a huge variety of different benefits and, and really gets people involved in their communities in a way, particularly in rural communities where, you know, going outside, going for a hike, enjoying natural spaces is, is part of the culture, is part of life. Um, and the sort of open door amenities are different ways that we are really trying to ask questions to ourselves about how we are going about having people engaging with the landscape and how different people are pardon me, are getting out into the world and where there are ways that we can lower those barriers, where there are ways we can make outdoor spaces more inviting, particularly the people who are new to this area, including people who are coming here for outdoor tourism, people who are visiting, just different ways to sort of reduce those barriers to entry for people wanting to get out and wanting to get into their communities. Next slide, please. <laughs> So our first ask, uh, or our first sort of project in this, uh, is centered around a uh, big boy Chimenez Island um, in Trent Lakes. Um, I'm sure many people are familiar with the island or have houseboated or have walked the trails on the property. It is truly one of my favorite uh, properties that we currently protect. It's over a thousand acres, um, the biggest island, and potentially we've done some research on it. It may be the biggest conserved freshwater island, full stop, in Canada. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is very special as a place and really is a, a big shining beacon of you know what can really happen when communities come together to to do something wonderful like this so on the um 
pardon me, on the, uh, the island, there's a set of trails that winds through a variety of different areas. Um, has anybody here ever walked on the trails on Big Island? Most yeah, of my life. Yeah, most of your life, yeah. I think my, uh, my dad camped there uh, when he was a kid, and a variety of people have enjoyed it in a bunch of different ways. Um, so the trail system right now, uh, we established uh, several years ago at this point as sort of an official route. And over time, it has been getting beat up a little bit. Things have fallen down on it. Luckily, thankfully, the Direco didn't do too much damage, but we have seen some wear and tear coming in on a variety of different things like the trail signage um, and our trail maps that are out there. Um, so one of the first uh, asks of this grant is for, um, <coughs> pardon me, uh, is for financial support to be able to update some of those things, including developing new updated trail maps, uh, updating the trail markers that are out there, and making the trails a little bit more, um, I hesitate to say accessible, because uh, it's um, not sort of in that accessibility in terms of certain grades and percentages and making it sort of wheelchair accessible, but accessible in the sense that if you've never been out on the island, it is a little bit hard to figure out where you're going, and uh, if you're leaving or perhaps uh, houseboating there, sort of going off into the middle of this big island may seem a little bit intimidating. A few people who I've talked to while I've been out there have said, well, we really want to explore, but we're not quite sure where to go. We're not qu really quite sure how to get there, um, and some of these upgrades would help to lower that, uh, that hesitation to really go and explore this really wonderful and beautiful place that has a lot of historical significance in the area. Next slide. So over the just roughly eight kilometers of trails that exist on the island, they do wind through a variety of different habitats um, that are susceptible to um, having the signage and different trail markers be damaged or be removed or, you know, a tree falls down with them and then it rolls down a hill and you can't get them back. Uh, which happens a surprising amount of time. A funny anecdote is um, I was out doing some trail clearing on the island this year. And as a first, uh, the beavers actually took down one of our trail maps and markers. They, they chewed down the tree that it was nailed to. Um, so uh, working with wildlife, always an exciting time. But the uh, eight kilometers of trails on the island are really heavily used by a wide variety of members in the community, uh, particularly through tourism. I, th I think the, I forget our numbers from a few years ago, but there are several thousand visitors to the island every single year, the houseboaters, people who live in the area, and it's year round as well. We have plenty of people who go out and cross country ski on the island in the winter. Uh, next slide, please. While you're, so waiting, our, while you're waiting for the slide, I, I think I see a springtime adventure for some members of council that haven't been to that island. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. Uh, yes, absolutely. We tend to put the docks in uh, around the May 2 4 weekend. Uh, so if you want to come for the inaugural docks in, going for a walk around on the island. I would absolutely love that. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I really like being outside and I like being outside with other people. So if you guys want to get a tour, uh, happy to do that. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Yeah, anytime. Uh, anyways, um, so the uh, the second part of our, of our ask here is to support a couple different programs happening at Darnell Chase Memorial Park. Again, another really well-loved and well-utilized recreation area in Trent Lakes that uh, might be one of my favorite Port Land Trust protected areas. Um, so this property has a variety of different things that we've been trying to do to increase its sort of appeal to the local community. We installed bike racks so people can feel safe to um, lock their bikes up and access it through a variety of different community projects through the Cattle Path project, looking to connect different areas of rural municipalities together with better biking infrastructure. Um, as well, we've been uh, working hard to do trail upgrades and a variety of different things to sort of keep things fresh, keep things new. Um, one of those things I think I've talked about in the past here has been delayed a little bit, unfortunately. Um, we had plans to put in another section of trails and have it wind through a different wetland area with a platform. That unfortunately has been a little bit delayed just due to the fact that there are species at risk in the area and working within those environments. There are a variety of different things we have to make sure we're doing and timing and doing well and doing right so we're not doing untold, untold damage. Um, so that I'll have to sort of update you as we go through more of that process this year, but I'm hoping to be able to have that installed this year. But uh, in specifics to our ask for this year, uh, we're looking to do <clears throat> sort of two different things. Um, one is we've heard from a lot of members of the community that 
accessing and going out on the public trail systems is great, but not everyone is super comfortable uh, going to the bathroom in the woods. And that's fair. Uh, if you have not grown up outside, if it's not something regular, if an outhouse is a very scary place full of spiders to you, then that you know can be intimidating to go and, and utilize that outdoors. So our, our first ask uh, on this, uh, and next slide, please, is to <coughs> have a facility on site that would provide um, regular, uh, sorry, that would have a uh, accessible toilet on site at Darnell Chase Memorial Park. So hikers and visitors um, are able to use it and feel a little bit of relief while they're out there. Um, this, we hope uh, is gonna be addressing a community need um, that we've heard from a variety of different people in the area that you know access to outdoor nature spaces is, is wonderful, but some creature comforts are also a really nice addition to, again, work to a sort of uh, allowing more people into the space of enjoying the outdoors. We, you know, sort of as an organization have been taking a great look at where we work and the communities that we serve and the people that are in those and access to bathrooms has been something that's been brought up quite a few times for a variety of our different properties. Um, so these bathrooms would not only be available, but they would be accessible as well. So there aren't any officially designated ac accessible trails at Darnell Chase Memorial Park. But in working through a few members on or working with a few members on our board and trustees, we've um, talked to people who access at nature spaces using a variety of different mobility equipment. And they have said that some of the trails at Darnell Chase are quite inviting um, for people with mobility equipment, despite not necessarily being accessible. So recognizing that there is certainly a need to be able to provide some of these things there. And through this uh, grant, we hope to be able to have this um, accessible toilet installed and obviously regularly maintained, cleaned out on a weekly basis. Um, so it wouldn't just be left to be, you know, sort of uh, not a lovely place to go, but it would um, be regularly maintained and, and kept up to standard. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and I just wanted to take uh, sort of this midsection uh, to, to talk about some of the other things that we've been trying to uh, do at the park to make it a little bit more accessible and make the trails a little bit nicer. Um, we've been trying to increase the amount of times that we get out there and mow the property and mow the grass. We do know that ticks are moving into this area. So that's something we're really trying to keep in mind, particularly at Jarnell Chase, because it's a lot of grassy fields. Um, and being able to keep people outdoors, having the trails be cut a little bit wider, and have the trails be cut on different grades seems to be um, allowing us to keep that problem at bay. And as well, I just wanted to point out one of our lovely volunteers has been making a bunch of benches for us and putting them out in a variety of different, very strategic, uh, uh, picturesque areas to take a break and enjoy. Um, so you can see the photo of that bench on the right at the top of the hill um, overlooking down toward Gannon's Narrows. Next slide, please. Uh, the other ask that I wanted to put out um, in this grant request is that uh, funds to be able to continue to plow and maintain the parking lot. Um, we've seen a pretty dramatic increase in the amount of uh, or the, the cost of plowing uh, in the last few years. Uh, last year there was a variety of different changes to the sort of legal framework that plow operators are, are operating under including insurance and a variety of different things that actually um, had our original plow um, company uh, not able to keep up with those costs and, and not offer that service anymore. So we've had to shop around. We're working with another provider right now who's really loves um, uh, the park and really loves the area, but things still do cost money. So we've seen a pretty dramatic increase in that. So part of this ask as well would be to help us cover some of those costs to be able to do winter maintenance in the area to make sure that, you know, the, I'm guessing as of right now, the parking lot uh, hopefully is not a sheet of ice uh, and being able to keep some of those things um, safe and secure and accessible for the community over time. Um, this is also a, a great, um, we had a, uh, have a great relationship with this uh, plow operator as well, who's been keeping us up to date on a variety of different things happening at the park. I don't know if anybody saw earlier this year, but um, someone decided to move a bunch of the parking lot boulders uh, into the middle of the parking lot and 
generally sort of cause a bunch of havoc and, and trouble. Um, and we were actually notified of that uh, by some community members, including some of the people who do plowing and management for us. So having these relationships with them, having them on site regularly in the winter as well, really helps us keep up to date with sort of what's going on. Um, like I said, we manage over 5,350 acres spread all across Peterborough and Macorthas. Uh, so it is a big area to cover. And we really, really feel so grateful and rely on this community of volunteers and operators and service providers to help us keep up to date with some of the things that are going on. Next slide, please. And with that, I just did want to speak uh, to a little bit about some of the other projects that we're going to have going on on these two properties um, over the course of this year. So at Jarnell Chase, um, we're working really closely with Trent Severn Waterway and Parks Canada as they're developing their multi-species action program, um, which is going to look at us doing a variety of different habitat enhancement projects, looking at different ways we can get people connected with the natural environment through citizen science, and as well, different recreational opportunities um, out on the park. So we're gonna be working really closely with them this year to develop that plan and figure out sort of their strategic goals, what's really important in the area and how we can best uh, serve the land there. Um, and as well out on uh, Big Boy Chiminas Island, we're gonna be doing some very exciting work related to uh, model dusky winged butterflies, which are an endangered butterfly. There are not very many of them at all across Ontario, and Trent Lakes is actually home to um, uh, a population of them out on Big Island, which is very rare and very unique and interesting. We're going to be taking on some work there to do some restoration of their habitat, and also probably doing a few different community events, and as well working with our group of volunteers and stewards who look after the island, do things like garbage cleanups and keep the space sort of friendly and open for, for the community. Next slide. And to just sort of wrap up with this, I did want to speak uh, just to really how important it is uh, for us as an organization to offer these spaces as community resources, as places to connect with nature. I think a lot of people over COVID realized how important it was to not be trapped in your four walls and get outside and enjoy the spaces. We have constant um, updates from people going at the park. It's one of our, the park and big uh, boy Chimina Island. Um, about how wonderful the spaces are and how fortunate they, they feel like they can uh, access these natural spaces in the community, go on guided hikes, bring their friends, just sort of re-engage with these, uh, these really gems um, in, in this municipality. Uh, next slide. I realized I didn't have any great pictures of any wildlife in here, so I thought I'd throw uh, one of the residents out on uh, Big Boy Island um, in here to also say thank you to Council uh, for your support in the past and hopefully support in the future. So thank you for your time so much. Thank you so much for your time and uh, listening to our request today and I'll hand it over for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Aiden, anybody have any questions? Aiden? I'm seeing no questions, Aiden. I have one comment. The one picture has a multitude of milkweed plants in blossom. That gives me some ideas that our monarch butterflies are surviving. <laughs> yes, for definitely. <clears throat> Particularly out on, on the island and at Chase, the populations there are really healthy and we're hoping to do a little bit more for that as well because, I mean, what a gorgeous butterfly. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Comments? Okay, I'm seeing none. Thank you, Hayden, very much for your passion. We can hear that in your voice. Okay, we are going to move on to our next delegation, which is Michael Oldenick from the Kin Mountain Pickleball. Go ahead, Michael. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Councillors. My name is Michael Oldenick, and I'm here with my wife, Suzanne. Hello. The purpose of this grant is to bring pickleball to Trent Lakes and more specifically to Kin Mountain Fairgrounds. Uh, just a little background. Pickleball, as many of you may be aware or maybe not aware, is an extremely popular sport in North America. Uh, currently, very limited capacity to play, uh, play the sport within, uh, within the Trent Lakes area. We presented the idea in actually late 2022 to the Kinmount Fair Board. Um, and eventually it was accepted mid-year 2023, but due to funding and timing, it was put off until this year. So who are we? Uh, my wife and I were cottagers on Crystal Lake and have been for 25 years. Uh, we've been involved organizing uh, a 
number of activities on the lake, including triathlons, fishing derby for families, and an annual ride around the lake, just to name a few. Next slide, please, Jesse. So how popular is pickleball? Well, it's one of the fastest growing sports. In fact, currently more people play pickleball in the US than play golf, which is surprising given how long they've been around. And this was an interesting stat for me, but to keep up with demand, uh, approximately 384 courts are being added every month in the US just to keep up with demand. We see many, many tennis courts um, are being converted to pickleball courts because of its popularity. And this is an interesting stat that the survey showed that most of the players, 62% are female, and 94% of them are 50 years plus. I believe that's, that's probably a bit of an older stat because we're starting to see more and more younger people starting to play the game. So uh, the game is certainly evolving and being attractive to, to the younger society as well. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. This is just a real quick slide to say, hey, why is, why is pickleball so popular? Well, it really is an easy game to play. Um, usually within 20 minutes of instruction, you're engaged in playing an actual game. And if you compare that to golf or tennis, you know that with 20 minutes of instruction, you still wouldn't be on the golf course and you still wouldn't be playing a tennis game. So pickleball is, is very easy to learn and play. It's a very social sport. People love it. It's a fun game and all ages can play. It's great for all skill levels. Um, and people can develop their skill very quickly. Um, it's a very healthy sport. It's inexpensive to play. And the amount of space required is, is much smaller than tennis, for example. In fact, one tennis court you can convert into two pickleball courts. Um, and reason number nine is interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's good for parks and rec. Now, why is that? Because Usually when Parks and Rec have, it, have the facilities available, they find that it's very heavily used. So it becomes a very positive, uh, positive um, project to have within a community. We can go to the next slide, please. So where are we proposing this? This would be at the Kinmount Fairgrounds. It's an excellent facility. As you know, they've got a, a covered arena there where we would, uh, we would host the pickleball there. Uh, so even in uh, in poor weather, we'd still be able to play, and we can put uh, at least six courts in there, and the area offers lots of parking. We're proposing um, June to August. We'd have to stay away from the the, the uh, annual fair, um, so we're looking about 12 weeks there. We are proposing initially we'd run it 9 to 11, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But I think we would adapt that program as we see, you know, what is it that the players want? Maybe they want some evening play. Maybe they want a uh, uh, weekend play. But certainly we can talk to the, the uh, fair board and we can, we can adjust it as, as suitable. I will tell you that my wife and I, we go down to Bob Cajun to play. And they play at the uh, curling rink there. And they play, uh, in fact, they play every day and they play some evenings. And when we're there, all the courts are filled and we don't go in the evening, but they, they tell us that in the evening, those courts are, they're always fully booked as well. So um, very popular, just to give you an example of how popular it is down there. So how are we gonna get people to know about this? Well, certainly through word of mouth, local businesses, local newspapers, social media. I can tell you that um, we have a Crystal Lake Community Associ Association Facebook group. Um, and I forget how many people are on there. I know it's well over a thousand people, but last year when we were trying to gauge interest, I had 155 people express interest in local pickleball. So we know that the interest is there and uh, certainly people from other lakes and other communities would, uh, would come to Kinmount to play. Next slide, please. So who's gonna wanna play? Well, it's gonna be open to anybody uh, in any skill level. With six courts, we'd have 24 people playing at any given time. And those who have to wait, usually you're going to wait for a short period of time until the next game uh, starts. We would certainly offer learn to play sessions to get people interested. And the game is one where you just show up to play. You don't need to bring other, you know, unlike tennis where you'd have to show up with three other players to play. You show up and you're mixing and mingling and meeting lots of new people. So again, that's the very social element of the game. 
All players would sign a liability waiver when they when they appeared. Um, right now, we're proposing that the cost would be six dollars per person per play. Uh, sorry, I said six five. Sorry, five dollars per person, um, and we can certainly tweak that number if we have to. But that seems to be the going rate both in Bob Cajun and in Burnt River. So the initial grant would be to cover nets, balls. We would have to tape the lines on the on the floor, the insurance, and a few um, entry level paddles for newcomers, and possibly some designated coaching sessions. The replacement balls and the and the balls do break, believe it or not. So the balls and the tape, if we have to replace it, that would come out of the player fees, ongoing player fees. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we would aim to use. Hopefully we'd find students that need volunteer hours so they could be our designated court hosts. So really a court host is the person that's kind of in charge for the day that would uh, make sure that everybody has signed a waiver and paid the $5. And if we don't get a student, then usually we can have one of the players. It's either, it could be my wife or I, or if we have other people that are interested, we designate them as a court host for the day. We really want to hopefully do this without having, without having to hire anybody. And in the end, all of the proceeds are going to go to the Kinmount Fairgrounds. This is not something that uh, that we're going to benefit, that that my wife and I are going to benefit from. It's really for the community. And the corner fairs cover electricity and overhead. And yeah, so the Kinmount, my, my wife just pointed out that the Kinmount Fairground people have said, you know, they do have some costs in terms of electricity um, and some other things. So that would go to cover their, their overhead. Uh, next slide, please. So what is the local benefit? The benefit is, hey, it's going to bring a lot of people together in a healthy and an encouraging environment. Uh, we do know that pickleball is uh, known to improve your physical and mental health, and um, it will draw people into Kinmount with the potential for other activities to support the town, such as dining, groceries, supplies, and tourism. And certainly Trent Lake's uh, support would be promoted through signage and communication uh, to the participants and, and, our, and on our Facebook or social media groups. And one last thing I'd say is um, last year when we were coming to present to the Fair about, uh, Kinmount Fair Board, uh, I stopped into one of the stores to ask about if they knew what, if there were students available that could help. And um, in the end, this lady ended up saying, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we had something in the area to do other than go home and watch Netflix at night. So I think that kind of, you know, sort of struck a chord with me that it would be nice to have something that uh, was a little different for people to engage in in the community. So that's all. I will uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. And if you have any questions, I'd be we would be delighted to answer them. Okay, Michael, thank you very much for your delegation. Does anyone on council have any questions of Michael? See, Councillor Franzen, go ahead. I have basically a comment. <clears throat> I think it's a great idea to bring pickleball to the Galway area. Uh, I, I'm also aware that uh, the Galway Hall is looking into uh, pickleball, but uh, they'd probably only be able to have one or two courts within the Galway Hall. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to answer that one. It's Suzanne here. Um, I have also been working with Galway Hall to bring pickleball there. Um, yeah. Although it's it's not going to benefit the town of Kinmount and the local businesses if it's there, uh, but it certainly would be used a lot by the Crystal Lake, um, Salerno Lake, and White Lake community um, would benefit Galloway Hall for sure. Yeah, and, and through the mayor, uh, we, we do have a meeting on Monday w uh, with uh, the, the Galloway Hall, and uh, one of the agenda items is pickleball. Oh, nice. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead, Councilor Braber. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Uh, thanks very much, Michael and Suzanne, for your presentation. Uh, this, uh, I, I just see uh, an abundance of opportunities for Trent Lakes. Uh, I know I know the, the Buckhorn Community Center, um, there's a lot of pickleball there. Now you're trying to get this going up in Galway. We have it in Cavendish. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity to to bring uh, Galway, Cavendish, and Harvey together, uh, whether it be by way of you know annual tournament that uh, involves uh, you know all three um, halls and, and areas, and 
and then just build it from there. Uh, I just see a really good opportunity to, and as you mentioned in your presentation, that uh, you can involve all the small businesses, whether it be in Galway, Cavendish, or Harvey. Uh, I mean, it's just a fantastic opportunity to grow this. And I don't know if you've seen uh, the website uh, Pickleball Ontario. Um, yeah. There's a lot of resources on there and, and just some, uh, some fantastic ideas as far as tournaments and maybe an annual Trent Lakes, you know, pickleball champion. Um, I mean, obviously at different levels, you could have people that just want to do it uh, socially and that sort of thing. And if anybody has a little bit more ambitious, then you could build uh, some um, opportunities around that. And I think it'd be fantastic to bring people out. And, and I know down here in Harvey, there's a lot of businesses that would jump on board with that and participate and, you know whether it be for the country wines or or the businesses in downtown uh, buckhorn mm -hmm. so i think it's fantastic and i appreciate your uh your um, taking this on um, well you're welcome and uh, you you raise uh, you raise a great number of points and also personally i'll let you know that uh, my wife and i we are so we live in collingwood and we're members of the georgian triangle pickleball club so we you know, we know how popular it is here and how sometimes it's difficult to get, you know, sign up for, for things. Also, we see the element of the, the social aspect of it as well. So a lot of friendships are built. A lot of people that, you know, when we started, we didn't know these people. And now, you know, now you're having wine and cheeses and you're having uh, cocktails together. So so I think it, it would, you make a great point. And I think you'd see a lot of people coming together and, and beginning to develop friendships. And if I can interject with one more comment, Suzanne here, um, we have an underutilized facility sitting there. The arena is used if there's ice in the winter for a month or two and for the Kinmount Fair and one or two other events. And other than that, that beautiful building sits empty. So we'd love to have the opportunity to utilize it. Okay. Thank you very much, Susan. Okay, anyone, any more questions? Seeing none, thank you very much, Michael and Susan, for your delegation. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Have a great day. I do believe pickleball is growing in Trent Lakes. Thank you. <laughs> I think you are absolutely right. Okay. We can now move on to Christine Brickman of the Kinman Agricultural Society. Christine, you can unmute yourself if you are online. Uh, good morning, and actually this is a perfect segue into the uh, King Mountain Agricultural Society after the pickleball. Um, it actually uh, might shorten my request. Um, I'm Christine Brickman. I'm a board member. Actually, I'm a very new board member, and um, I will be presenting the best I can on behalf of the King Mountain Agricultural Society and the grant request and to give an overview of what the, uh, the King Mountain Fair and the King Mountain Fair grounds is all about. Next slide, please. And thank you, Jesse and Amber, for squeezing me in. I was um, over the deadline for getting um, the material out to you, getting a delegation on behalf. Um, for an overview on the King Mountain Agricultural Society, it's a nonprofit organization. We are incorporated. And the, uh, the main event, of course, of the year is the, the King Mountain Fair. And it is very community oriented. It's family oriented um, for kids. And what the main goal, of course, is to promote and uh, uh, agricultural and also just to bring the, the community together. Um, the fair is the main event that the volunteers do work on and that is on the Labor Day weekend. It happens in a flurry of activity, but behind the scenes, it's quite it's been a big, big eye opener to me to be on the board to see what happens behind the scenes to make the King Mount Fair actually happen for the, um, it, it looks as if it's just a three day event, but the, um, the trailer park, it becomes very active starting on the Tuesday morning. And it's a facility that the King Mount um, Fairgrounds holds 240 sites and they are filled and uh, starting on the Tuesday. The Kim Mount Fair was founded in 1872. 2023 celebrated 151 years in operation. Other than the uh, the years of COVID, 
there's approximately 25,000 people that attend and participate in the Kim Mount Fair each year. What are some of the, uh, the big events that happen? Next slide, please. Showing some visuals here. There's the, um, the horse pulls, the truck and tractor pull, the Kin Mount uh, Parade that is the grand opening for the, the fair. There's uh, talent competitions. There is the Heritage Center. Next slide. The um, exhibition hall, you probably have all gone through there. I think I've seen almost all of you at the exhibition hall, and that's for the agriculture. There's uh, large prizes for entrance, and it really is, um, it energizes the, the, the young youth to participate because they get quite excited at entering their um, produce, their largest carrots, their largest cucumbers, and also putting in any of their arts and crafts. Um, I, for one, my my hairdresser in Ken Mount, she gets so excited with um, participating with her kids as they figure out what uh, contest that they want to participate and get all excited about getting their drawing, doing their drawings, doing the photography, and also just, you know, putting together flowers and whatever it is that they might be able to put on display. You can see a picture there of the trailer park. It's absolutely beautiful. And I can see why uh, families get excited when they, I think it's in beginning of January, when they can start to um, get their spots secure because they, year after year, they are able to put their trailer parks there and meet up with all their family and friends. The mid Way. Look at that. We had a Ferris wheel this year when we came into Ken Mountain, came around that corner and saw the Ferris wheel. How exciting! A Hello, Christine. Thrill that was for so many people to see that Ferris wheel set up this year. It's been a number of years with no Ferris wheel. Next slide, please. We're struggling to hear you, Christine. Yeah, is the next slide there? Yes, it is. Oh, did I freeze up? Buffering, I believe. Oh, you can hear you there. I know. Oh, there you go. There you go. You're back. Now? Okay. I've moved into a different location. Sorry about that. Internet technical difficulties. So you can hear me now? Yes, yep. we can. Hmm. Oh, you can. Okay, good, good. Okay, so I've, I've also put pictures up here of the uh, the Midway at night, and um, there is a lot of activity that goes on in the evenings. I've only ever gone during the day, so going at night was um, quite a thrill to see the Midway and the concessions all lit up. Um, we also have the uh, uh, wood carving competitions, and of course the who uh, the Derby, the Smash Up Derby has been infamous for decades. Some other um, events that, that take place as uh, I think you've all participated in and seen the parade and the Heritage Center, um, the Kids Midway, Kids Races. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the dog show competition. I've never laughed so much as seeing the different types of dogs that show up. They they get them dressed up in, in costumes and it's the largest dog and the smallest dog and everybody loves to see their dogs in, participate in competitions. Not only is there the, the Kin Mount Fair, but there's also the, um, during this past season, there was the Cat B Off-Road 
that was, um, they had, I think they were there for one or two weekends. There's also the Terry Fox run, the Canada Day celebrations, and um, they bring in a lot of people as well from the community. And in past years, there was the Highland Games. There was, as um, Michael pointed out, we used to have ice skating and, and uh, uh, organized hockey leagues, but due to, um, I guess, climate change and expenses, there, there isn't ice right now. Um, there's also been numerous community dinners, events, weddings, uh, celebrations. And we do have a very energized uh, volunteer board right now looking into you know, bigger and better events such as the monster trucks, pickleball, movie night, um, having a farmer's market there perhaps once a season, vendor events, food festivals, and even looking towards a playground. Next slide, please. What is the funding request? It's uh, $20,000. And where we're looking at for some of the project costs is to towards the landscaping, the track and the trail upgrades. And that would help with the um, uh, safety for the trail upgrades, um, arena line painting, uh, more sports equipment, better lighting. Uh, the biggest expense for the project is the public washroom upgrades. Uh, when we get the, when the Kim Mount Fair happens, there is a, with 25,000 people in attendance, the public washrooms are uh, utilized extensively. Uh, pro project signage, the signage would be really just to improve the signage around the fairgrounds. It uh, becomes a little bit uh, overwhelming for some people with that many people there and there's events everywhere is that they kind of get lost where they're trying to get to. And outdoor stage renovations, the stage is utilized a lot, but it is deteriorating and definitely needs some um, upgrades. And the roof and shelter, I think most of you were there last year for the at the Heritage Center for the welcome um, meal that they had, it is outdoor. That limits it if there's bad weather, any kind of different weather, or just maybe being able to be utilized at different times of the year. Uh, having a roof over the entire Heritage Center would be a big upgrade. <coughs> Next slide, please. <coughs> so the main uh, main track and the walking trails is really just to improve it for accessibility. And that's not just for walking, but it's also for outdoor use for jogging, cycling, that that uh, outside arena or the outside track area would be utilized if it was uh, better maintained. And needing to have the uh, arena improved would allow for the events that we've mentioned, such as pickleball, other recreational games. If it were um, better lighting and accessibility, we would hope to see that it could be used for seasons for community activities. And there are numerous upgrades required and, you know, too numerous to mention. They did get underway last year, but there's still lots of improvements that could be made to have the buildings not continue to deteriorate, but we want to have them uh, improved. Next slide, please. Hmm. Did I freeze again? No, we can see your slide and we can hear you. Okay. I think I mentioned all of these topics already. So I will take you to the next slide, please. As I mentioned, the list of improvements and projects is extensive. Um, this board is very energized to come up with ideas and, um, and get things into progress and we did lose a lot of resources and momentum during the COVID as it needed to be um, cancelled for a couple of years and we are really looking forward to having Kinmount being a community recreational and events hub and as you can imagine it could be endless it's a beautiful property it's well maintained and it's in an amazing, great location. And we really 
uh, think that it could be in a bigger and better place for people to attend and participate. And with that, I thank you for listening and if you have any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Christine Brickman. Does anyone on council have any questions of Christine? Go ahead, Councilor Braybrook. Through you, Mayor, it's just a comment. Thanks so much, uh, Christine, and uh, welcome to the to the board. Uh, came out uh, last or this uh, last year's uh, came out fair. Uh, that was my first uh, going there, and it was fantastic, and uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, the rides were great. Uh, my height was fine, but it was my weight that was an issue. So I had to, <laughs> I had to mainly just sit back and watch and live vicariously through all the other uh, non-weight issued people. So thanks very much, Christine. Okay, I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christine. Um, are you in the warm, sunny south? Or are you uh, up here in the ice and snow? <laughs> the warm, sunny south. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Lucky you. Um, I had a question on the financials. Um, we were provided with 2022 actuals, 2023 uh, projection. Um, without getting into specifics, it looks like uh, fiscal year 2022, um, the Agricultural Society banked a pretty hefty surplus, just under $100,000. And I know that can't Give a complete picture because throughout COVID, you may very well have lost some money. So, I guess the question in general is, you know, what kind of assets, cash assets, is the society sitting on, and cannot can that not uh, be utilized to support some of the uh, renovations and upgrades and uh, projects that you have spoken about? Okay, good question. And I didn't print out, I printed out the financials that you mentioned, but I didn't print out the portion that had the, the bank account. Right. I have access to it uh, because we've got the AGM that's coming up and I, I see that the treasurer just published that. But I do believe, as you've mentioned, there is uh, quite an amount in the bank account. However, um, that money dwindles relatively rapidly as the uh, this year that and last year that they um it's not on these financials but we did hire um people groundskeepers this year uh to do the as you saw it was very well maintained so we do now have uh, a full-time i think it's actually two full-time people during the summer months to work on the grounds and also the need for the upgrades to the building is quite extensive. And um, because the grant request, I believe it wasn't allowing for certain parts, um, we were really talking on this grant request more for the types of improvements that we listed. I mean, yes, the answer to the question, yes, they could utilize from the cash, the bank account. However, um, you know, we really do need more funds to make it the bigger improvements. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I'm seeing none. I just want to say thank you very much, Christine, for all the effort that the new members of the board are doing. And I like that you have future plans. I think that's pretty amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay. We can now move on to Pam Dickey, the San Jose Patrol. Would like to come up? As I said, I'm the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just as an aside, Peter, my property was done three years ago. So anytime you want to come down this summer and see my beautiful shoreline that's all been well protected and the flowers and the butterflies, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> 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 that's what I have. I, I believe so. <laughs> I was one of the lucky ones. Uh, thank you all for seeing me today. I just want to reiterate this program that I started two years ago and it's really snowballing. Um, after I did the, we did the deliveries last fall, um, I had got a phone call from an individual. My fridge was empty. Now I don't have to shop for a month. It was just, and those were the type of calls that were coming in to me. And I thought I needed to share that with you. So we know that this program is a well needed program for our area. Um, my volunteers, I have a group of 20 that have come forward already that want to help this year. 
I was talking to Rob White at uh, British Empire Fields. He's going to come on board to help me find people. Like if they have individuals calling and they can't pay their their fuel bill, or if they're going to do the fuel bill and not do the food, I want to know those people. I, and they're all going to be in within Trent Lakes. We're also going to be approaching the area um, uh, churches. We can't do the doctors, obviously, in the pharmacy for privacy but i'm also going to ask every one of you too because you know the people up joe you know the people up in your area pete you know over by you and john and carol and uh, we need to expand this program we did 20 we can we want to do 40 this year our group says um with the excess from last year's program which was 290 dollars 20 people are going to get easter dinner this year buckhorn food foodland has agreed to make ham and scalp potatoes MPP Smith said he's going to make me apple pies. That's going to be an amazing thing. You know, we've got we've got soup already ordered. So um, it's something. It just blew my mind how much this is a well-needed program. Um, and I thought I'll come if there's any questions you want to ask about this. It's short and sweet. Thank you very much, Pam. Does Council have any questions? We'll get yeah. Councilor Franz. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, is this uh, mostly a program for disadvantaged people or shut-in people that may have resources? This is shut-in people whose families don't come and have very limited resources. It's a it's a decision. It's do I feed my animals or do I feed myself? Do I pay this bill or do I not buy food? And I I had two cards that I received which I sent to you um, with the presentation. Um, and those colored pictures that I, those are two of the, the examples of the um, Christmas cards that the public, the kindergartens made for them and each individual got four. So yeah, it, it's all, and it, if they're physically issues too, it's, it's where they have no food and no support. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Graber. Thank you through your mayor. Thanks very much again, Pam, for all, all that you've done and, and you continue to do. Uh, how many uh, how many people would you say from last year to this year that uh, participated in the uh, in your program? Uh, we increased the, it by five this year, last year. And what was the total of that? We did twenty. Twenty. Mm -hmm. And they each got three bags of fresh groceries. Um, we, the donations came in after me doing the the request last November. Um, donations came in, and every dollar that we received, we spent. Um, and uh, so Foodland, bless their hearts, Shriek did an amazing job. They had three bags of fresh food. They had frozen food and then two big bags of, we called them treats, which is, you know, cookies and chocolates and notepads and word searches and stuff. Plus a toucan hat, a toucan and mitts they got too. And calendars. Things that make you feel better. It does, yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? How would you how would you differentiate uh, what you're doing to what the food bank currently does? How, how would you? My individuals will are will have no access. To, they 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 just they don't go there. And I think a lot of it probably is pride, confidentiality. The only people I know who they are, and the only other people that know who is receiving this is the person that's doing the delivery and my people that are doing the deliveries have now touched base with touch base with these individuals and so they have some social contact now too um but it, that's probably it's pretty much that's what it is john yeah thank you yeah. thank you any other questions seeing none thank you very much Pam. Thank, you. thank you very much for all that you do in our community greatly appreciate it our, our clerk would like to speak. Thank you. Just before we receive all the delegations, uh, Sarah Jo from the Dharma Center had to attend another meeting, but she did send me some um, financials uh, that I believe Councillor Braybrook had asked for. So uh, 300,843 is the 2022 figure, which was compared with 209,134 in 2021 and 196,931 in 2020. Is that revenue? Sorry. 
sorry, through you, Mir, is that revenue? Or what is that number? <laughs> um, she did not, she asked for the 2022 financials. So those. Yeah, I think I had sure. asked through you, Mary. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I had asked for for uh, the revenue and expenses, just to get a comparison as to uh, the amount of increase from 2020 to 21, 22, 23. Or I think we had 23. So that's fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, I need to entertain a motion to receive all of our delegations in one motion. If anyone is prepared to do that, Councilor Franzen, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, now we can move on to. May we have a five minute Absolutely. Break. Great, grand break. idea, Councilor Franzen. We are going to take a five minute bio break.
continue our broadcast. Okay, we are back. We can now move on to item six of our agenda, which is grant applications and 6.1, Donna Taggart, our CEO treasurer, would you like to speak to this item? So thank you and for you. Um, I would just ask if Bianca could put up the uh, summary spreadsheet, please. Perfect, thank you, Bianca. So thank you. Uh, before you is the breakdown of the community grant requests in 2024. So as a reminder, in June of 2023, Council approved an updated community grant policy. And under the updated policy, the annual funding available for community grants is limited to 0.60% of the previous year's taxation levy. So for 2024, the amount available under this program is 63,141.78 based on 60, 0.60% of the 2023 tax levy, which was $10,523,629. So the updated grant policy required the completion of a grant matrix by each council member where applications were scored and ranked with recommended grant amounts being determined by each council member. The average of these amounts is before you today for approval. So out of the 63,141.78 available for funding, um, 54,869 has been allocated. So there remains 8,272.78 under the program that is still available for funding. Staff are looking for council support to award the average amounts as recommended by council and shown on the screen. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. Does anyone have any comments or questions or would like to speak to an item on the grant request? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lamps. And I'd asked uh, previously if we could uh, pull out the Dharma request. Um, so on the positive side, I really appreciate uh, Sarah Jo coming to present to us. Um, because I just, the kind of a, hidden <laughs> treasure there that doesn't interact, doesn't seem to interact a whole lot with the community. Um, very supportive of what they do. I think they bring in some uh, very strong uh, people for their retreats, et cetera. My issue, my proposal is that we not award them anything. And the reason is, it, to me, it's precedent setting. This is uh, an organization and a center that charges their people to go there for the classes, and to stay there. Um, yes, they do get donations as well, uh, but it's not like it's free and open to the community. And I think as soon as we start to give money to organizations, even nonprofit ones that charge for their services, um, that we're setting a precedent. I mean, could it be churches next? Could it be, I had another in mind and now I've lost it. Um, but, and again, I support what they do. I think they're a great organization. They do bring people in from, you know, the US and Canada. I just don't think it's an appropriate thing for the municipality to give them grant money when they're an organization that uh, has the people that take advantage of their retreats pay for their services. And so I think I'd rather give them nothing um, and with that statement in that sort of position. Okay, thank you very much. Deputy Mayor, go ahead, Councillor Franzen. Yeah, uh, uh, through you, Mayor, I'd just like to build on the Deputy Mayor's comments. Uh, I agree with her 100%. Uh, we may have organizations like Elon Watch coming next, which would be a comparable organization, probably a bigger site, but a comparable organization. And uh, uh, and churches, exactly what the Deputy Mayor from so I would support her recommendation. Okay, Councilor Braver, go ahead. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, I echo uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong and uh, Councilor Franzen's comments. Uh, not that it's the same animal, but uh, um, I just I look at the municipal act and the bonusing. Not that it's the same thing, but it's uh, has to do with uh, commercial businesses and businesses in general sort of so I'm, I'm i'm a little reluctant to to uh, uh offer any money and i'm not screwed so i agree with uh, 
Deputy Mayor Abstrad and Council for his position. All right. Thank you very much. Any other comments? I'm seeing none. Actually, go ahead. Um, if I if I can build on that, um, the money that they are requesting certainly for an admirable use to make this cabin accessible, et cetera. But I'm not comfortable with granting money for the purpose of land and building improvements because I think those are capital improvements. I think it adds to their asset base and it's probably not the business that the municipality should be in. I don't mind supporting programs and services, et cetera. Um, again, it's not in our policy explicitly, although we may want to look at it in the future, but just on general principle, I don't think that's an appropriate use of municipal money to invest in capital uh, enhancements for organizations. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. I, I do think that uh, there may be other avenues of grant money that are available for accessibility things for businesses of that nature. So there, there are other opportunities. So municipal tax levy is going to go up as it is. So I think we have to be cautious what we do with this. So thank you for your comments. Okay, and I think we had another member of council wanted to talk about another one of these items. Yeah, it was the Buckhorn Community Center. Council yeah, uh, I, the the grant to the BCC. I, I found over the years our grants uh, have been very inconsistent to the Buckhorn Community Center. 2018 we gave 19,000. 2019 we gave 25,000. 2020 we gave 25,000. Then 21, we gave 30,950. 22, we gave 29,000. And then we dropped it in 23 to 15,000. I think that's a very valuable resource with the municipality. And if we had to provide those services, that would only be a fraction of what it would cost to provide the services that are provided by the Buckhorn Community Center. I mean, uh, they, they had the mental health ban there. They, they did the COVID shots there. They do enter, entertainment programming there. They've started youth programs there, which was requested through council about two or three years ago. And uh, they stepped up to the plate and are providing that kind of service. I, I'd like, I, I would like 25,000, but I would, 20,000 that I could support. I couldn't support anything less than $20,000. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Franzen, for your comments. Anyone else like to comment on the BCC amendment? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Freep. Yeah, through you, Mayor, I, I, I concur with uh, Councillor Franzen's comments, and and I know that this, this may not be the forum to speak of it, but I think um, a further discussion as to how how the municipality interacts with the BCC as far as uh, sort of funding. That's a conversation uh, to be had, uh, but I, I would support uh, 20,000. Okay, any other comments or questions? I'm seeing none. I, I just, for me, I, I, I know this is a wonderful organization. This is, it supply a lot of things to our community. It is a privately owned and operated business but they do do a lot of things for the municipality of Trent Lakes and many, many, many of our members and ratepayers and residents, whether you're, they attract such a wide variety of people to that organization. I, I, I'm not above being a little more than the 17,000, but I don't want to, I certainly wouldn't want to go much more. I would like to keep some of this grant money available for other things that do happen during the year, which does happen. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Yeah, if there are no other exceptions, I would make a motion to uh, approve the grant amounts uh, that are in this matrix with two changes. One would be to move the Dharma Center to zero dollars, and the other would be to move the Buckhorn Community Center up to twenty thousand dollars, and that would still leave us somewhere in the neighborhood of five thousand uh, dollars available for emergency purposes. Thank you very much for that motion, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any conversation? Yes, through you, Go Mayor. Ahead. Um, okay. Is there an opportunity to, I had um, comments on three other uh, items. Sorry. 
jump gun. Oh, yeah. that's okay. Sorry, my apologies. We didn't know that that was coming to us, but uh, I think we, this is the opportunity to discuss it. So we are having in the more conversational section of our resolution. So we have a mover and a second. If you want to bring something else up, go ahead, Councillor Braver. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's just, uh, I'll keep it brief. Uh, the Court of Land Steward, um, it's, uh, it's listed at uh, $760. The request was $1,000. Uh, I, I would like to see that uh, brought up to $1,000. Uh, Court of Lake Steward Association, yeah. Yes, Court of Lake Steward Association. Any other comments on that? And the rationale, sorry. Well, it, I believe last year it was a thousand as well, uh, and um, I think the costs uh, associated with the meetings and, and the information that's uh, that's passed out to to the public, and, and also uh, with the new uh, environmental advisory committee coming forward, uh, we'd just like to see the uh, thousand, see how that interacts with uh, the EAC. And if uh, and we can uh, have a discussion, but next year is a uh, grant. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments about that before we move? Go ahead, Councillor Franzen. Yeah, I would con con concur with uh, Councillor Braybrook. I think it's a great organization, and they certainly haven't uh, expanded what they asked for year by year. They've been very consistent, and uh, we have donated a thousand dollars in the past. So. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Franzen. Any other comments? Seeing none, I, I have a comment at the end here. I, When you talk about our water quality and quantities and things, and this is what we need to have happening here is to monitor our our water. And this is what this organization does that would cost Trent Lakes tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to do what they do for nothing. I think $1,000 is a very small amount to ask for, for support for this organization. Go ahead, Councillor Franzen. I'd just like to make one comment. I, I, I think it's important that we have a, a liaison between that organization and our environmental committee. I think that's very important and will be very beneficial to our municipality. Thank you. Any other comments? Would, I guess I can't make that motion. Someone else would need to do that. Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Sorry, I, am I able to comment on uh, the remaining two? Sure. Uh, a, sure. Uh, Go ahead. Is this the yeah. time? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the other uh, one of the other ones is the Santa Elf Elf Patrol. Uh, I know the request was uh, was uh, fifteen hundred, uh, and um, we were willing to uh, provide uh, eleven hundred. I'd like to see that at the fifteen hundred. My rationale for that is an extra four hundred dollars. Uh, the rationale is. Uh, it's just just for the the work that's that's uh, done on on behalf of our our shut-ins, our uh, residents. I think it's important, and, and I don't think fifteen hundred dollars is is an abundant amount of money uh, for that type of um, service that's being provided. So I would like to see uh, the fifteen hundred, the additional four hundred, uh, bring that up to fifteen hundred. It's 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 a service that. I just think should be uh, provided. It's it's not a business. It's it's uh, you know a uh, person taking this on and, and trying to uh, trying to ensure that uh, you know the inclusivity of uh, for all our residents that uh, don't have the opportunities to be as mobile uh, as uh, a lot of the other residents. So that's that's for okay. that one. Do we Thank have you a conversation with that? Yeah, we might as well. If anyone else wants to comment on that one. I'm seeing none. Go ahead to your other item, Councilor okay. Braver. Yeah, and the last one was the Trent Lakes uh, Recreation Association. Uh, they requested 2,500, and uh, we were looking to a lot 1,200. Uh, I was hoping to see that uh, be brought up to 2,000. Um, so an additional 800. Uh, and the rationale for that is, is again to Deputy Mayor Armstrong's uh, questions to Bruce Avril. Uh, as far as uh, outreach to Galway and uh, Cavendish Halls. Um, and uh, it, it would be an addition uh, and a compliment to uh, to the uh, the stage uh, settings uh, and whatnot. So I think it would be uh, 
uh, beneficial to uh, for the 2000 uh, uh, as opposed to the uh, the amount that so uh, we're allotting. Okay, any other comments in regards to that? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lansford. I don't necessarily have a problem with what you're suggesting because we we will still have money left over. My I am uncomfortable because any one of us could speak to any one of these. They're all deserving. Yeah. Right. And so we went through a process to try and best accommodate everybody's level of uh, priority and interest. And as soon as we start tweaking them yeah. like this, then we've kind of thrown some of the integrity of the process out. So I'm, I'm, you know, again, I don't disagree with the amounts, but I don't like the process. Um, and any one of us could sit here and, you know, you might want to talk to the Galway Hall. Um, and I might, might want to talk to the Buckhorn District Tourist Association or the Greater Harvey Historic Society. So I feel like we're starting to cherry pick and reverting back a little bit to the way we used to do it. Um, so I'm uncomfortable with that. Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, I, I I know what you're saying, uh, Deputy Mayor, and, and this this being the first time that we've uh, embarked on this this matrix uh, process, um, it should have some sort of latitude built into it uh, to revisit it and, and perhaps address uh, some of the issues that you've just brought up. Um, uh, and in in saying that, perhaps in that process that can be discussed you know, uh, further. Uh, from this meeting today, uh, I think perhaps we could build uh, a mechanism in the uh, the matrix that allows us to provide rationale prior to uh, the uh, the amounts uh, being collated from uh, uh, five of our uh, inputs as to what we believe uh, each of the uh, organizations deserved uh, from the um, availability of the funds. So. So I, I agree with uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong's comments, and I think we sh we should uh, build that uh, concession into uh, perhaps the matrix for for next year and, and try to refine it and uh, to uh, to alleviate mm -hmm. those types of concerns. Yeah, perhaps that in the future we can have a second round of our ideas instead of just having this one time. We get to do an average and then do it again. Get a little more fulsome number before we take it to staff's wonderful coalition of information. Okay, any other comments? If it's it's now up to someone to either amend the motion or if it's friendly or or not, doesn't matter. We I think I'll keep with the motion. You're good with as that? stated. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Request to record the vote. Sure. Okay, we have the motion with two changes, right? Mm -hmm. And we are not supporting the other three changes that were brought up by Councillor Braver. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Braver. Have Sorry. one more comment. Sorry, three of you, Mayor. So, just so I'm clear on the motion, uh, the three that I brought up, that's is that going to be voted on separately, or we're going to? If you would like to make that a motion, that would it, it, it can be as. Go ahead, go ahead, Clerk Jesse Clark. I might just to help to clarify. Uh, you could propose an amendment to the motion. The motion it would have to be seconded. Uh, count, or Deputy Mayor Armstrong did not agree to a friendly amendment, so you would need to put the amended motion forward. We would vote on that, and then we, you, would vote on that, and then you would vote on the main motion as amended. So, uh, am I able to uh, put an amendment to to the initial motion? Uh, yep. That being uh, to add. Uh, the Court of Land Steward uh, grant from 760 to 1,000. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa's Elf Patrol from 1,100 to 1,500. Mm -hmm. And the Trent Lakes Recreation from, well, it was 2,500 requested from the 1,200 to 2,000. Councillor Brandon? Yeah, I can support the motion except for the last item because then I I I would be forced to revisit the, for example, the Galway Hall. Okay. Thank you for that comment. But I think if that's a secondary motion, we need a seconder for that motion. 
Is anyone prepared to second that motion? Okay, that motion has failed. We will go back to the first motion, which is Deputy Mayor Armstrong's motion. Anyone else like to comment on that motion? No, sir. Cadigan, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mayor, for the reason that I wouldn't support or second Councillor Braybrook's motion or amendment, sorry, I also will not support the wholesale change to the other couple of uh, amounts just because I feel like we've all put in our input already. Should we be changing it at this point? Very good point, Councillor Caddy. We already started the, the ball rolling on changing things by agreeing to change two of them. Does anyone else want to make a friendly amendment or a, or a, a different amendment to? I don't see none. Okay, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Vote. It's a recorded vote by our group. Uh, thank you. Councillor Franzen, are you in favor? Yes, I am. Mayor Lanshead? Yes. Deputy Mayor Armstrong? Yes. Councillor Braybrook? Abstain. Councillor Cadigan? Opposed. That motion is carried. Okay. Thank you very much, Jesse Clark, for looking after our recorded vote. Okay. We can now move on to item seven of our agenda, which is staff reports. And item 7.1 is Donna Taggart, our CEO treasurer. Would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, and through you. So before you is an updated 2024 draft budget report. Sorry, Bianca. Thank you. So the municipality has now received the assessment role for 2024. The current value assessment is uh, 2.8 billion. And as a reminder, the province has delayed reassessments province-wide and the values are currently frozen at January 1, 2016. So the assessment growth for 2023 was 1.71%, which was the amount estimated at the November 28th meeting, which is almost $50 million. So growth is the difference between the January 1, 2023 value and the December 31st, 2023 value for new builds and renovations, that type of thing. So changes approved by council at the November 28th meeting have been made along with any other changes identified by staff. And you will see in the attachments to this report that all of these changes have been identified in the individual departmental budgets for your information. So with the changes, the tax levy increased between 2023 and 2024 would be 419,893.13 or 3.99%, which equates to a tax rate increase of 2.28% when factoring in growth. So decisions made today on the community grants to be awarded um, will be updated in the draft and staff are looking for any additional changes from council with a plan to bring the budget back for approval at the November 20 regular meeting. So staff will um, seek additional council approval should any salary changes be identified as a result of a market compensation review that's currently underway, which is expected to be completed by early February. So therefore staff are looking for council to receive the report from, from the CAO treasurer and provide direction on any additional budget funds, including amounts approved for the community grants, which we now have, and that council directs staff to bring the 2024 budget to the February 20 meeting for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Donna Taggart. Anyone have any questions of Donna? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lamstead. Um, thanks, Donna. Um, great job with the budget, and, and it was easy to go through it and, and see exactly the changes that have been made since our our last one. I have two questions. Um, the first one is, do we understand why the OSIP went down and was it the total that was lower and just allocated or did we just get a smaller piece of the pie? I guess I'll stop there and ask the second right. question later. So thank you and through you. We, everybody got a smaller piece of the pie pretty much. So yes, the analogy of, of it is that it's supposed to reflect our replacement values for our assets. And we did undertake a very exhaustive 
uh, reporting to the province in the summer and all the municipalities I spoke to, their OSIP funding still went down. Okay. Sure. OSIP stands for, sorry, it's just for those that are listening, as um, I don't remember. <laughs> Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund. Perfect, thank you. I do believe there was one municipality near us that did go up $50,000. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. And if I may, through you, Mayor yeah. Hamza, the second one, um, the market uh, assessment of compensation that we're undergoing, uh, which we need to, and I, I think certainly support it, is there a, an intent that that would impact compensation for this year? Would that be the consideration as a result of that report? Okay, so thank you and through you. That would be the recommendation of staff. We would want to keep salaries competitive. So yes, we would be coming back to you and would let you know of any budget impacts that that would uh, result in. But yes, we would be looking to up the salaries in 2024, depending on the recommendations under that review. And if I can further comment on it, that's um, scary from a confidentiality perspective. Let's just say the report comes back and says, yeah, your salary should go up 15% or something, which maybe it will. Um, that has a huge budget impact on us. Staff will know that that's the recommendation and will be expecting and wanting that. And yet we are gonna have to be custodians of the budget and put in a very awkward position <laughs> of either approving it all and blowing the budget. I'm being extreme here, obviously, um, or, you know, not approving it, uh, being conscientious of the budget and the taxpayers and disappointing staff. So I think you understand where I'm going with this right. confidentiality, information sharing and setting expectations uh, around that. Thank you and through you. Um, as typical, as a public entity, salaries would be open as far as the knowledge of you know, the salary grid for Trent Lakes would be something that would be shared. Where individuals are on those grids, that's a different scenario. So part of the market analysis would be the consultant recommending how to implement uh, any salary increases. So I don't anticipate an increase of that nature. We just did one two years ago. This is more of a refresh type document. But if there were salary increases of that nature, we would probably look to phase those in over you know, time. But that's why I made sure I, I spoke to the fact that we will come back and, co and give you funding options, but I would not anticipate increases to of that nature, but we will wait for that review just to confirm that. But we will come back to you with some options for funding it. Any other comments, Deputy Mayor Armstrong? No, no, I thank you. That 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 helps. Um, have to think about it a little bit more. Any other questions <laughs> from any other members of council? <laughs> Seeing none. Okay, did we have a motion yet? I don't think we have a motion. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Make a motion to receive uh, Dr. Hacker's uh, report. And second part of that motion is to provide direction on additional budget amounts. Is that part of yeah, that motion? Yeah, okay. And to the council direct staff to bring the 2024 budget back. Is that part of that motion? Yes, that's okay. part of that. Perfect. So thank as, you, Mayor. Thank you. So if it's as recommended on that report, yeah. and do I have a seconder for that motion? See Councillor Cadigan for yes, go ahead. For Just to be clear, the second part of that um recommendation was for council to provide any direction on additional budget amounts are there any or can staff just be directed to bring it back to the february 20th meeting was there any other budgeted amounts okay. approved by the committee the community grants thing so we we do have two because we increased the bcc one and we increased about the other one so so those, I, I'm assuming those are part of that. Yeah. And everyone's okay with that. Is there any other parts of that that we need to include? I'm seeing none. Okay. 
So what we should do. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Lynch. I think we just need to be very clear that we're not asking for any additional budget beyond what's uh, been provided in this report. And it does already include the, the grant amount yes. um, in total, which is $63,000. So it doesn't matter Precise. how we yeah. uh, reallocated any of those funds. $3,900 left. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay, everybody understand that? Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. We can move on to item eight of our agenda, which is the adoption of the confirming bylaw. I'd like to make that motion. Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a mover, and I have no one for a seconder. Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. We can move on to item nine of our agenda, which I think we'll wait for a little while before we call for. Anyone prepared to make a motion to adjourn? See Councillor Cadigan for a mover. I see. Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, staff, for all their efforts. Thank you very much to everyone that applied for a grant. We got what we got needed. Thank you very much.